So tell me about your first memories of a barbershop. My first memory of a barbershop, I go to a Jamaican barbershop, so my first memory is a very long memory. I was in the barbershop for probably six hours. I was sitting there and my dad always had my hair just shaved all the way down. I had the same haircut literally for like 10 years. So my first memory is honestly consistent with the rest of them. I must yeah. say that. It's always a long wait. Yeah. What about you, Steph? I didn't even, I wasn't even allowed to like choose my haircut till I was in like, no, I'm dead serious. African parents? Yeah, yeah. bro, you, are, you already know how it goes. My mom used to like, just like cut my, like go bald everywhere and then just like leave a little bit of hair up yeah. top for like the longest time. <laughs> no fade? And then no fade, no, no fade. nothing. Just, <laughs> just the bald, bald patch right there. And then <laughs> around ninth grade, I started to get like fades and like, you know, like tape ups and all that. And then now I just have this. My dad, cut my hair till I was seven. Then I went to school and he's like, you don't know, you're seven years old. Just like, oh, why is it, why is the lineup like that? I was just like, oh, what's wrong with it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know no better. I'm over here getting cut in my basement. But I always in had the that. basement? Yes, in the Lord. basement. On the steps, you should sit on the steps. I still got the clippers in the basement. And your mom let him do it? My mom didn't care, that's free. <laughs> it's free. Exactly. Then you get older, Oh, where'd you get your hair cut? My dad still do it. Nah. Like for me at least, going to the shop was kind of like, for some kids in my neighborhood, it was like a safe haven. It was a spot where it was like an after school program almost. Like, like no matter where you're from, everybody had to get cut. You see like a lot of life, like real life at a young age. So like how, how, did, how did that affect you like coming up? I think that for me, it definitely let me see that, you know, the different type of people in the community can affect the community as a whole and the effort that's put into that community itself. Yeah, Word. I can remember, so uh, my mom, single mom raising seven children, right? So you had the three girls and then the four boys, and she would take all the four boys to this older cat in the neighborhood who would cut out of his house. Uh, his name was Old Man Kenny. Shout, shout, shout out to Old, old Man, Man Kenny. Kenny. So that was my first real like shop experience was actually in somebody's house um, until I started to actually know what the barbershop meant to the black community, right? where it is almost like a therapy session. You know what I mean? Where you have a relationship with your barber to the point where you can't go to another barber because you feel like you might cheat on him. You know? Nah, that's <laughs> real. You know, that's it's real. real. Loyalty like, I, I, is everything I go in the to whoever has time. Like, there's been times where I'll go, like, in no, Long no. Island, I'll go to a barber shop, there's too many people, I just go, like, to the next one. Like, oh, I you be, you be I can't do the empty chair? No, I'm yeah. like, I know oh, the people. Like, oh, I was say, nah, you know, no, 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 I only got one. That's it. I only trust one person to cut I my mean, hair. It's Understand an interesting well. relationship, man. You know, it's an interesting relationship that you have, that you trust with, with how you go out into the world. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I trust you with my life to make me look good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's real. Because so if you I, don't make me look good, somebody go make fun of me. Exactly. So I can remember in, in high school, when I started to get in my bag a little bit, Right. I would go to the shop on Fridays to get a, a full cut, and then I was back on Wednesday to get a lineup. Mm. That's Ooh. how fresh and crispy I was in Ooh. high school. He was back. He was that's playing. different. Nah, that's you different. thought you thought he was that dude. I kind of was. No, but um, <laughs> but it was important to me. You know what I mean? To to to, to stay fresh. How we present ourselves to the world is uh, is interesting, and I think the barber and the barber shop has a, a, an interesting in, interesting place in that. You yeah, know? I went to private school my whole life, so mm. I didn't have some of those experiences. Yeah. And my barber was Dominican at first, so mm -hmm. I'm not talking to nobody because they're talking in Spanish. So as I got older, I went to my dad's barber in Boston, and he was there was that was a black barber shop, and they would talk about sports. This was I was in like seventh, eighth grade sports, yep. anything that came up. My mom every Saturday morning, me and my brother wake up at six thirty. She would have an appointment at eight o'clock at her friend's house. Super early. She get her hair done. Me and my brother are just sitting there playing. I bring my toys. If I got homework from school, I'll do that. And there's just, you sitting around, there's just a bunch of women around you. And they talking, and you're just listening. And then you try to get in a conversation, get out of grown folks' business. It's like, that's all it was at that point until, until I actually got old, I actually started to realize right. the barbershop that you referring to and conversations that I actually understood and actually could put input into. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. Like for my barbershop, like it is a Jamaican barbershop, so everybody speaks Patois. So like, you know, growing up, I didn't understand anything that they were saying. Yeah. So I think it took me time to get comfortable with that. 
because you know you don't know somebody's talking about you or if they're mm -hmm. not and it definitely showed that it was a place where all Jamaicans who migrated to the country were able to bring their children to able to get their own cut so it's kind of like a generational thing as well yeah. like you bring your son to the barber shop that in the barber that cut your hair or somebody that you trust it's definitely a, a nice place to be vulnerable so question did you did you end up learning patois in the in the barbershop i think roughly i can understand it yeah. my whole family speaks it so it definitely was a start to me understanding it and like the terminology that they use i need to hear a little bit a little a little more like some some patois, some patois like yeah. uh it'd be like wagwan mr right. wagwan right. You know, me said, why go on picnic? And what does that mean? <laughs> it says, it's like, what's up, what's up, picnic? Yeah. Or what's up, youth? Right. Youth? What's me up, youth. child? Yeah. Yeah. That's not bad, right? Why you, you call him a child, child though? <laughs> huh? Why you call him a child, though? Well, he wasn't wow. calling me that. No, right. but. Yeah, but you know, like brethren. Yeah. Right, brethren. Or my youth. My youth, man. <laughs> <laughs> but that's oh, directly to the different things that we could pick up, you know what I mean, from that generational sort of uh, mix and match mm -hmm. in the barbershop.